thank you for joining me. This is the fourth part of the Bhutan Theism Plus, a challenging meditation on reality, in which I will address the afterlife in relation to pantheism plus. In this area, there is actually substantial evidence in support of reincarnation or rebirth, whichever term you prefer to use, in the form of testimonies of some individuals who can recall past lives that were far different from their current lives. They are often able to describe this former life very vividly. They may have had visions or dreams in which they recall this former life without ever having met family members of the individual that was supposedly their past incarnation or been where they formerly lived or even known anything about this individual. When people actually investigate these accounts, they do discover that this story that the individual is telling them in fact matched the life of a deceased person extremely well. These people distinctly remember having lived the life of another without having any outside knowledge that such a person actually existed or who they were or what they did, but the vast majority of scientists refuse to accept that this evidence is suggestive of rebirth or reincarnation 678,910 because of the lack of consensus on these cases among the scientific community and the sheer fact that these cases are so rare, I cannot claim that reincarnation or rebirth is a fact, but I do believe that this is strong evidence, and thus I do believe in rebirth. From a less objective standpoint, it seems to make sense in nature as opposed to dying and going to heaven or hell because in nature nothing is created nor destroyed, nothing more or less than what is already there. Everything is recycled, so to speak. I believe that this includes spirits. You may ask why I believe in spirits at all, and I'll take an existentialist viewpoint that when we die there is no more of life, that life is contained only in the body. I do not pretend to claim that it is a fact that spirits exist and reside in us while we are alive, but I would say that given the evidence for reincarnation, there is no other conclusion to come to them that spirits must exist and reside in our bodies when we live and leave them when we die, most likely going to a new body. While scientific evidence for the existence of ghosts is minute, at best, perhaps because skeptics fancy the notion of ghosts too unrealistic or far-fetched and simply refuse to investigate claims of their existence, I have a few friends and acquaintances whom I believe to be credible that can very vividly recall happenings that are suggestive of the existence of ghosts. They claim to have seen ghosts, seen what could only be the doing of a ghost slash ghost since nobody else was present where they were beside themselves, or they were inside a structure of nobody was outside or something happened that cannot be explained in any logical way, or even to have been touched by ghosts, nobody else was around, when they felt this, and in some cases these friends, have had other people with them who confirmed that they experienced the same thing. I have also seen some credible photographs and footage, and recorded sounds of what appear to be ghosts, the vast majority of these media that claim to have recorded the presence of ghosts are indeed fraud but some appear to be unexplainable, as of yet, from a scientific standpoint. In no way can these accounts be explained logically, which means that one must assume the existence of spirits in order to explain these phenomena. One can choose to believe or not in their existence, but I strongly believe in the existence of them, and these pieces of evidence only serve to back up such a claim. There is also another far less objective reason that I have believed in the existence of spirits. Human beings and many other animals have been able to do things that do not necessarily benefit their survival. This means that they have a will, which could imply that something else is in action other than their body's biochemistry, which promotes nothing more than survival and reproduction. Many animals also have some sort of self-awareness or self-consciousness, particularly some mammals and birds. They seem to know that they have a separate individual existence apart from the world that they inhabit, and they can evaluate themselves to some extent. The fact that these certain animals possess a self-awareness and free will to do things that do not necessarily benefit them if they are only investigated by animal researchers. Most animals are also sensitive to pain, but I don't think this is suggestive of having a spirit, but rather having a mechanism that increases the chances of survival through the avoidance of harm. Lower forms of life, such bacteria, may not have spirits, since they have no will of their own. However, in the greater life forms, I believe the traits that I have noted are possibly indicative of possessing an animator or an essence through which they possess and use free will, which I would call a spirit. The spirit 
However, I believe to just be an essence sound cannot contain the traits or the personality of the being it is a part of. Although I also believe that some wholesome or unwholesome mental states may persist much like the way memories seem to have persisted in the individuals involved in the case studies of reincarnation. When one dies, I believe there is a personality, and one will not have the same traits of the new life of one had in their last life. In some rare cases, as exemplified by the case studies of reincarnation, some individuals may recall memories imprinted on them from the last life for whatever reason. I also believe in the concept of karma, that if we do harm to others, harm will befall us in this life or a future life, but if we do good to others, we will receive good in this life or a future life. However, I believe that good or bad karma does not occur because of the actions that we do themselves, but rather the intentions or maxims of our actions. If we intended to harm another, we may suffer in the future, but if we intended only good things for another, we will experience good things in the future. I believe that we also continue to be reborn due to the principles of karma. If we have harmed, we will be born into an incarnation in which we will suffer, but if we have done good, we will be born into an incarnation in which good will become us. I believe that we continue to be reborn until our intentions become wholesome. We become unattached to worldly things and could simply become one with the universe. I could become one in close because we are never truly separate with the universe, but we must come to a total realization of this fact and not think of ourselves as being separate from everything else and that we are indeed selfless. I believe that we should also repent for our wrongs or sins and to hold some acts with wholesome intentions in our life that will result in good karma. What I mean by repenting is not repenting in the form of praying to a personal God, because such a God must not exist, but instead in the form of consulting with the personal God within oneself, renouncing one's past actions, forgiving yourself for acting in such ways in the past, and making a commitment to not repeat such actions. In addition, I believe we should meditate on accepting divine oneness. If you believe in divine oneness, will in the suffering we deserve for the sins we have done. When one achieves an enlightenment that agrees with these things, one's intentions having become wholesome, repenting for one's sins, and waking up to them with good acts, including seeking forgiveness from those you have wronged, and forgiving those who have wronged you, becoming unattached to worldly things, and becoming one with the universe, one will be liberated from this cycle of rebirth, and will have reached a blissful. That was a quote, because one body will die, whether or not they have achieved enlightenment. It is simply the spirit that will no longer be reborn slash reincarnated in a state called nirvana, in which we do indeed feel that we are one with the universe in a state of ultimate selflessness. This discussion will continue with part five of this book. Goodbye and may peace, love, and happiness be with you.